Halo Infinite is one of the most anticipated game releases in decades due to 343's seemingly feedback-driven commitment to avoiding the same mistakes and missteps that made Halo 4 and 5 into the controversial titles that they will always be. I mean, everybody argues about Halo in the Halo community, in the Halo player base. Everybody argues. But the topics surrounding 343's titles, 4 and 5, are about whether or not they're even real Halo games. After Halo Reach, the formula was way up in the air for the series, and many people had to question what they enjoyed from the series. The reason I think people love Halo 3 so much and why it's so popular is that it's the most modern and polished Halo game that captures truly what it means to be Halo. It's the most modern and polished classic Halo game, especially now with the MCC running at high frame rates, high resolutions, with extended FOVs, Halo 3 does not feel like an old game, yet it follows the older design principles of Halo. That's why I think it's so popular. There's also some balance reasons, and there's some reasons people don't like it, but doesn't matter. We're moving on from there, because that's not what this video is about. What does this say about our expectations when it comes to Halo Infinite? In my How Modern Should Halo Infinite Be video, I basically expressed that Halo Infinite just needs to follow the rule of not making players overpowered and playing things a little bit more close to the chest so that they involve themselves more in the sandbox. Essentially, what I said was Halo Infinite can be modern without betraying what makes a Halo game a Halo game. But let's address some of my Halo Infinite fears anyway. First things first, gimmicks. I'm afraid that Halo Infinite will have some gimmicky feature that ends up adding more problems than it solves. This could be the movement, the grappling hook, or even just the overall sandbox and gun balance. Weapons and things can be tuned over time, but if there are integral changes to the Halo formula that are required, maps are built around them, the game is built around them, and they're not going to change, it could really impact people's opinion on Halo Infinite. And I really hope Halo Infinite doesn't have to release, get made fun of, until it does an entire rework patch. There are some things people just take for granted in shooters, whether it's the map design philosophy, or the movement, or movement speed, and certain things could be off, and then suddenly the game doesn't feel like Halo to longtime fans, and it kind of just loses that traction with long-standing members of the player base. But I'll have more to say about the inverse of that problem in a second. The next thing I'm gonna complain about, I guess, or share my fears about, is the free-to-play nature. Halo Infinite having a free-to-play multiplayer while also launching day one on Game Pass has me worried about monetization, trolls, and cheaters. Free-to-play games are a huge target for trolls and cheaters because essentially they don't have to put anything in to load up the game. And we've seen this with many free-to-play games, especially free-to-play cross-play games. And now that we have confirmation that Halo Infinite will be cross-play, we're gonna have Xbox players getting in lobbies with cheaters. And I'm sorry, that's just how this works. Nobody would ever, in their right mind, say that every PC player cheats. And I don't know why I've seen topics devolve into an argument about that. That's ridiculous, of course not. Turning on crossplay with a PC player in a free-to-play means that there is a good chance that that person might have something that they're cheating with. Now, console players can cheat too, I've seen it, but for the most part, it's the PC platform that's a lot easier to, you know, cheat and hack and be naughty on anyway. Yeah, when there's no paywall in front of a game, you're just gonna get more trolls and cheaters because they don't have a commitment to the game. They can cheat, get reported, get banned, make a new account, People will run virtual machines to avoid being detected. Like, serious to God, there are people that dedicate themselves to ruining other people's online experiences. We've seen this with many of the free-to-play Battle Royale games over the last several years. And when it comes to monetization, I feel like every armor set, every cosmetic is going to be unlocked through a battle pass or a just, you know, paid microtransaction. I feel like I'm gonna be spending $15 on armor sets if I want to have a cool look for my Spartan. I don't feel like I'm gonna be able to unlock these things gradually over time. And while, yeah, cosmetics are cosmetics, they could get silly. We could have weird gun and death effects. We could have really weird animated armors and shit. Don't think that it can't get silly. And if the game starts hemorrhaging money because of its free-to-play multiplayer and its Game Pass release and it's just not making money, they might try to target the game towards children. And this lines up with my gimmick fear as well. I don't want to see what happened to Battlefield 5 happen to Halo Infinite. 
in Battlefield 5, the game was in a pretty good state, and then DICE and EA decided that the gunplay needed to be even easier. It needed to be even more intuitive and responsive. It was obviously to net more favor with lower skill players or younger players. And I could see Halo Infinite, I'm sorry, 343, I'd love to just trust you with all my heart, but I could see them doing an update that makes the game easier. I could see them patching certain weapons and making players less reliant on the sandbox and a little bit more overpowered and then adding a bunch of goofy cosmetics if the game isn't making money and isn't retaining a player base. The next one is perhaps my weirdest fear, and that's about art style and story. So my weirdest fear is that Halo Infinite will be full of nostalgia bait and lack the originality that made the older games so damn famous. Rehashing design, bringing back characters, constantly referencing old scenes, bringing back tons of multiplayer maps, might make us feel all warm and fuzzy for a minute, but I really hope that doesn't make the game forgettable while lacking identity. I don't look back on references. References make me look back is the best way I can put that, and that's a quote from myself. I just want Halo Infinite to respect older titles while also taking risks, the necessary risks, and being its own game at the same time. We see this with Black Ops Cold War. We have all of these completely rehashed Black Ops 2 maps added into Black Ops Cold War. They don't fit the theme, they don't fit the setting, and they feel out of place, but ooh, but if you like Black Ops 2, it should make you feel all warm and fuzzers inside. And it makes the game lack identity. The cosmetics and thematic things they're doing with the multiplayer in Black Ops Cold War completely, completely just reek of pandering and nostalgia bait, and it just doesn't work. It makes the game feel like it has no identity. But my last fear ties in with my gimmick fear. I want risks, and I'm afraid that old fans, old longtime players like myself, might not accept new and interesting things. And some people really do just want Halo 3.5 for better or worse. Halo's feel and style are so important to people now, especially as they get older and as games go through changes and how Halo went through all these changes. If anything pushes the Halo boundaries, people will feel like their baby is being threatened. There are still people out there that are pissed to hell that Halo Infinite has sprinting in the campaign. Sprinting was never a problem in Halo. It would entirely depend on its implementation. What is base movement speed? What's the sprint out time of the sprint? What is the utility of sprint? How is it meant to be used in gameplay? But the mere inclusion of it has been enough to piss so many people off. So I'm scared that people won't accept change, and I'm scared of too much gimmicky change, I'm scared of weird things with monetization and cheaters because of the free-to-play, and I'm scared of nostalgia bait on top of nostalgia bait on top of nostalgia bait. I want Halo Infinite to balance being its own thing while respecting older games. The problem with Halo 4 and 5 is they change so much in the franchise. Like the original trilogy chief isn't acting like a Marvel superhero, but Halo 4 and 5 has so many cutscenes that look like they're ripped out of an MCU movie. Bungie played things closer to the chest. It made the more dramatic moments feel more dramatic. It made the more wild gameplay segments more wild. And I don't feel like 343 respected what Bungie was doing back in the day. And I hope Halo Infinite can respect what Bungie's original works were, while still, I want their own flavor. Not everything in Halo 4 and 5 was an absolute bust. Add your twist to Halo while respecting what Halo is and what people love about Halo. There are so many video essays out there that can put it way better than I can about why Halo is so special. So anyway, I'm gonna have some videos pop up on screen here. Feel free to click on them or tap on them and watch them. They're about my opinions on Halo and the, the, the feeling of Halo, the magic of Halo and how modern Halo Infinite should be. If you guys enjoy this content, please feel free to subscribe. I like to stream Halo and in fact, I will be streaming a playthrough of Halo 3 ODST over the course of a couple of streams. It might take me one or two depending on what kind of mood I'm in. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you when I see you, goodbye.